Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This morning, your first five registered speakers will be Marcus Russell, Diana Ramirez, Jean Batty, Isaac Sheen, Steen, and Eddie Probst. I'll recite the speaker guidelines. Speakers must observe the same rules of propriety, decorum, and good conduct applicable to members of the City Council. Any speaker making personal, impertinent, profane, or slanderous remarks, or who becomes boisterous while addressing the City Council shall be removed from the room. Individuals are given three minutes to speak. You'll notice the time at the monitor in front of you. When your time is up, please stop. Address your comments to Mayor Johnson only. Also, if you have any handouts, go ahead and hand it to the officer to my right, as it will affect your speaking time. Your first speaker, Marcus Russell. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. My name is Marcus Russell, uh, AKA better known as Marcus X. I'm campaign manager for Devontae D. Peters. We ran for District 3 City Council seat in the last election period. I am also co-founder of the Community Engagement Specialist Program in what is known as Highland Hills area of Oak Cliff and Dallas, but we are also in the Stop 6 area of Fort Worth. Many of you are aware of this program because my colleague Devontae Peters, who is also co-founder with me, came to the City Council meeting in White Rock and he urged the city to get behind us and support this program to which we have received thunderous applause. This response signaled to us that the council saw the value and need for such a program in our city since we had already caught the attention of ABC and NBC, NBC affiliates. After all the praise, Mr. Peters was invited to St. Luke Methodist Church last weekend. I came along with him for support because I was told they wanted advice to ask some questions about our platform and how we became recognized as a positive impact in the community that we serve with numbers to back it up. He consulted them and answered the question they asked and gave them an overall review of the blueprint. Then after about two days, a friend told me he saw a commercial, well, a news commercial with my face and Devontae's face with the story about the mayor uh, using a grant for a task force. I must say I was a little perplexed because I hadn't heard of it or even seen the news story, so I started searching articles and found out the Reverend Bowie of the St. Luke Methodist Church of the church who uh, his committee and board who we had just arrived, I guess was so impressed. The reason I'm saying this because the members of the church who are also politicians told us they had been discussing our program weeks before. So I must assume that the Reverend spoke to the mayor and because of this offered the mayor, the mayor offered a grant to develop a task force to create a program similar to the one we have already established. Well, Mayor Johnson, I am here to say that recreating the wheel uh, doesn't have to be recreated again for such a sensible program with proven results, which we've already done. We appreciate Reverend Bowie and his recognition and calling the mayor's office to a, attention of our program. He's willing to provide a grant to develop a program, and we're more happy to take it from here. Thank you for helping us open the door, and since we have already developed a program, we don't have to lose any time. We can hit the ground running and begin to re uh, replicate our program throughout the city. We are prepared to offer consultation, management services, and the best practices as needed to help re recreate our intellectual property in different areas of the city. We feel as citizens of this great city, it behooves us to do so because lowering violent crime doesn't just benefit us, it, be it benefits all residents of the community we serve. With our program, uh, we have made a constant big difference. Since we implemented this program, the community feels much safer. We have documented proof that the crime in our community we currently serve has significantly dropped since we started our program and engagement program. This is significant because before we arrived in this area, it had one of the highest incidents of violent crimes in the city and, and really the highest murder rate in these apartments. And though the state troopers had never uh, came to the Highland Hills area, we were still able to dr dramatically uh, reduce crime in the Highlands area without the assistance of the state troopers. Our program is unique because we don't address the symptoms which are violence and crime. We also focus on the disease which is poverty by finding resources for people, problems and not capitalizing off them. Growing up in impoverished communities Thank as you well very much. as... I'm sorry your time's expired but I appreciate it very much and I understand that we've actually been in contact with you, our office, so what, we want to talk to you more about the task force. Okay, yeah, and they did recently call us when I... I appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Diana Ramirez.
Good morning. My name is Diana Ramirez and I live in District 8. I'm also the Civic Engagement Director for Workers' Defense. I'm here to talk to you all about the budget and that saying of putting your money where your mouth is. The city of Dallas is ranked number three in child poverty and number one in deportations. Both of these issues affect me greatly. Some of the immigrants that have been wrongfully arrested or that have been arrested for very minor crimes, but yet they're placed in a deportation pipeline as soon as they come in contact with a police officer, creating a devastating consequence for their families. We need an anti-poverty budget, a budget that can attack the root cause of crime, poverty, a budget that reflects and supports the different kind of policies that have been passed in this same building People don't want to see nor need more police officers in the streets. We need more services. In 2018, the city of Dallas passed a resolution of being a welcoming city. It's time that that money gets allocated for a legal defense fund to help the wrongfully arrested immigrants currently being held in the detention center or jail away from their families. Detention centers are the worst. There are jails that provide very little medical attention to the detainees. My, my brother was in one of them for almost five months. And only the situation that they live there is that only two documented people can go visit them once a week for one hour. That creates very um, devastating mental health for the detainees. Our family members are being kidnapped every day and they have very little resources to fight back with the poverty wages that are paid. A lot of the times they can't even afford a legal representation. Everyone should have due process. It is in our US Constitution. The city of Dallas can and should do better by allocating money for this vulnerable community. I wanna add something else. Last month, a new splash park opened very near to my house in District 8. This splash park has brought so much joy, not only to my children, but to our neighborhood and has brought us together. I can only imagine what a 24 hour rec center could mean to teenagers and seniors that need a safe place to go every day. Crime can be reduced with these types of investments in our neighborhoods. And lastly, a few months ago, the PASIC time uh, policy passed here. It is very, very important that someone um, continues to oversee the implementation of that policy to make sure that workers are um, are given their the right that they earned uh, earlier this year. Thank you. Thank you. Jean Betty. Good morning, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Jean Batty. I'm a parent of one of the players on the Dallas Junior Wheelchair Maverick team. The wheelchair basketball program was formed in 1979 and has expanded rapidly over the last 10 years. This year we'll have three teams, two varsity division teams that play on a 10-foot 10, 10 hoop and one prep team. The program currently serves 45 disabled athletes. We are the largest community junior wheelchair program in the nation that's not directly supported by a hospital or state government. We have a no pass, no play policy with regular grade report check-ins prior to each tournament. The Dallas Junior Mavericks have won numerous awards. They won the national championships in 2009, 2010, and 2011. Two of our coaches have won the Ed Owen Coach of the Year Award. And in 2011, our program won the Courage Center Award of Merit for Outstanding Leadership in Developing a Junior Division. Currently, nine of our players are playing on the college level with athletic scholarships. Three are at Mizzou on the men's team, one is on Alabama on the women's team, two are at Illinois men and women, two are at UTA men and women, and one is at Southwest Minnesota State. Other notable program graduates are Tim Nagel with a master's from Illinois who currently teaches adaptive sports in Seattle. Robert Herkincat graduated from Georgetown with a bachelor's and then got his master's from USC. Bobble Nickelberry has been on the adult Dallas Mavericks men's wheelchair basketball team and they have won the nationals eight times in the last 11 years. 
In the past six years, our blue team has placed in the top five in the country four times with four academic All-Americans. But the biggest benefit that I want to impress on you is that for most of our kids, this is their only opportunity to play on a team sport with countless intangible benefits. They get to be true athletes, winning and losing against their peers. This is priceless. Why am I here? <coughs> Some of you may not be aware that we do not have a gym as of after November 9th due to the renovation scheduled on the Bachman Center. I've been working as a parent trying to find replacement space. It is a very, very big ask to find six hours of court time on a Saturday. And many of our kids travel a great distance to play with us. I know that the Recreation Department is working on this problem, but time is running short. Help us bring another national championship home to Dallas. Thank you. Thank you. Isaac Steen. Good morning. My name is Isaac Steen, and I wanted to talk about the budget. And one of the things <laughs> going on with the budget is I'm an African American living in the southern sector of town, and the budget seems to always fall short when it comes to down to spending money in the southern sector. One of our problems is uh, with the police department. Now, there's a proposal that want to increase taxes to increase the pay for the police department and have no problem with paying police for doing their job. On Monday of this week, I was traveling on I-35 North, coming through Red Oak City Limit. I was the victim of a road rage incident when I was run off the road, called 911, and the Red Oak dispatcher talked to me till I got to Lancaster and said that he could no longer handle the situation. Traveled on through Lancaster, the Lancaster Police Department 911 handled the incident and told me we was going into Dallas. If I wanted to stop and talk to their officer, I could stop. Or I was following the victim, I mean, the, the perp perpetrator of this crime had his license plate number down, giving it to the police as we travel. As we come up on 20, I was turned over to the Dallas uh, Police Department. The Dallas 911 operator told me that we have a no following clause. I told her that the person exited off on Camp Wisdom in 35 and pulled into the Exxon station, and I was sitting there behind them. She said, sit in your car until the police department get here. I got a unit dispatched to you. After about 10 minutes, I was told uh, that I would have to get off the phone with the 911 operator, which was protecting me and making sure I was safe, and I was getting a phone call from the Red Oak Police Department, which he told me to get out of the vehicle and walk around and see would I have any damage, and he told me that he could not do anything for me because of the fact that I only had a scratch mirror. Well, I told him that I called in a 911 road rage, and I was wondering how was he able to just separate me from the 911 operator, putting my life in jeopardy with someone in a vehicle who I know who he was and didn't know who he, who he was, and he had a big German Shepherd dog in the car. The, got the phone call from Red Oak, and he told me that the guy that was, uh, he, I guess he had talked to the guy. So, but he had told me previously that he could not handle the situation. It was out of his jurisdiction. Upon yesterday, I tried to get information about this situation, but the Dallas police would not do anything or give out any information. So me, being an African-American, why would I agree to give him a raise? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Eddie Probst. Eddie Probes, Leroy Pena. Good morning. My name is Leroy Pena. I'm the national director of the Red Handed Warrior Society, and I'm also an enrolled member of the Lipan Apache Tribe of Texas. Now, I was here last week when there was a, an exchange between one of the council members and a speaker here 
uh, last week. Now, um, my question is, what is the definition of hate speech? Now, has that been defined? Could it hate speech be to support a movement that is holding uh, a particular government accountable for his mistreatment of a, of a people? Now, you know, it was a pretty, pretty bad exchange, and even uh, a vulgar gesture was made towards this speaker. Now, uh, we expect more out of our council members. And to your credit, Mayor Johnson, you kind of collected everything and you kind of shut it down pretty good. But this council member is, has yet to be disciplined for what happened uh, last week. Because, you know, supporting something like BDS, in my opinion, is not hate speech. Because of what is occurring right now in that region, um, to support it is not uh, a hateful act. So, you know, um, we're, the community is looking for some, something to happen here because we can't have council members shouting down speakers and, uh, you know, saying words like hate speech when all they're doing is expressing their opinion. Now, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm Apache, so we know what it's like to be forced off our land. So we do have, you know, we, we can empathize what's going on with the Palestinians. Now, to support their cause, it does not make me an anti-Semite. It means that I am against the oppression of a people the same way that my people were once oppressed. Now, we're going to be uh, waiting these, ne these few days coming up to see what the city actually does as far as disciplining this council member. Because you can't be flipping the bird at somebody that's speaking. You know what I mean? That's, I mean, this is Dallas. We expect more out of our council members than that, than that kind of behavior. That behavior has no place in the council chamber. And shouting somebody down like that too, it lacks class. I'm telling you right now. You know, so we look to y'all to, to, to be an example to the rest of us on how to behave. A lot of you are from different political affiliations, yet you seem to get along pretty good. But we can't have people acting and things occurring like what happened last week. Thank you. I'm sorry, before we go on, I, I do want to say something about that. Um, I appreciate you. Um, bringing this point up, and I, and I wanted to say this. Um, I'm the presiding officer of this body, and, and I take responsibility for maintaining the decorum in this room and in our meetings. So um, I want to apologize for um, not doing a better job at my job of maintaining decorum. I'll do better. I'm new. I'm trying my best. Um, so I'm going to work on that. Um, we're reviewing our rules right now. We're working on um, how to make sure that our meetings run as efficiently as possible and that we're um, the best council we can be. So um, I'll take all these things you've said under advisement when we're looking at our rules revisions. Um, we have <coughs> things about decorum and things in our rules and we're gonna remind everyone um, of what our rules say and we're gonna hold that out as a, as a goal to do better. So I just wanna say, because I'm the, the one that these comments are directed at at this point in the, our meetings, um, that we're gonna do better and we're working on it. And uh, you know, I appreciate you bringing the. Yeah, the at the very least, uh, Mr. Crenshaw has owed an apology right. for what happened. You know, okay. uh, he's a very highly respected member of the African American Und community. Understood. Who also, so you know, does I, work I for I other people. I appreciate communities. it. Now, I just wanted to say that I understand. So I'm, I'm dealing with it. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank Ms. you. That, that concludes your first five registered speakers.